Mitesh, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, let's uh, shift our attention now to the commodity markets. Manisha, what's the one commodity that you're tracking today? I'm looking at copper, but just because Mitesh mentioned sugar, let me tell you that there has been a big run-up in sugar overnight, and we are trading at near five-year lows in the international markets for raw sugar prices. I think that is where a lot of momentum is coming in from. But back to copper, and that has been quite volatile as well. Overnight, it was uh, a 1.5% of a decline. For the week, we are 2.5% down, and for the year, we are trading in the negative with 11.5% of a cut coming in for the copper prices. Well, the reason that you have seen decline is the slower China growth. All the data has come in on the weaker side for the month of November. The US dollar is back on the strong foot and the aggressive rate hikes that the street has seen in this week, whether it's from US, ECB or Bank of England, all of that seems to be weighing on, on in case of asset classes. Take a look at what the copper prices have done in the US markets in this year. We saw a record high above $5 per pound. The low has been 3.13 and the current prices stand at 3.8 as of now. Looking forward in case of inventories and that is where ma maximum support comes in from. The LME inventories are just about two days of global consumption. When you look at the worldwide uh, copper inventories, that stand at 4.9 days of global consumption. So there is a lot of support is expected from these numbers there. The outlook for 2023 clearly depends on the global inventories, which have continued to be on the weaker side. Also, when you look at the copper cathode global inventories, those are also at a 14-year lows. Markets also are looking at the EV production, green transition investments. That is expected to surge, and that would mean a lot of copper demand going forward from here. There also is a report uh, suggesting from Anglo-America, which has cut production outlook for 2023. That could really add to the premium in case of the copper prices. Glencore as well says that IEA net zero emission estimate does put the copper deficit to around 50 metric ton for 2020-2030 in that next one decade there. This is a report from Wood McKenzie, which also says that there are underinvestments that you have seen in case of copper mines from a peak of $32 billion that was invested. The, uh, 2025 perhaps could see just about $12 billion there. Outlook 2023, well, this is the most important one to watch out for. Goldman Sachs, for one, is expecting all-time high prices in copper in the next year at $11,000 per tonne. Take a look also at uh, Bank of America. They're also expecting higher prices, but an average of 9,750 is what they're looking at. You also have reports from Fitch, Bank of America, PNB. Uh, Bank of America is another one. $12,000 per tonne is what they're also anticipating into the markets there. Fitch is looking at $8,000. So from where we are trading right now, most of these banks and brokerages actually are looking at higher prices in 2023. BNP Paribas, ING also trading or looking at prices above $8,000 per ton there. There also is a city report which expects the copper prices to range between 7000 7, to 8500 Kochilko, Chile, of course, is an important country. They are expecting 3.7, so higher from where we are trading right now for this one as well. And then there's a report from BMO, which also says that they're expecting copper prices up by 9% from the current year prices. So quite bullish uh, copper forecast for 2023 is what is being expected. Mm. You know, uh, Manisha, thank you very much. Commodities in 